what would you do if they brought the power grid down? Their idea is that they're going to have to sanitize the internet uh, because a bug, think of it as, as like a coronavirus for your computer, is going to sweep globally. And the only way they're gonna be able to stop this bug from infecting everything is to effectively shut down the internet, right? And they were talking about bringing down the power grid in an effort to do this. Candace Owens just recently reviewed a post from the World Economic Forum that warns of a potential cyber attack that could occur this year and be so severe that it causes the governments to have to shut down the power grid in order to sanitize the internet. What? And yeah, that sounds terrifying and even a little conspiratorial, which means it's right up my alley. But is this something that's even remotely realistic? Did you actually clean up a cyber attack by just turning off the power to the entire country? Man, look at, man, hell no. Let's check out her post and I'll break it down and give you guys my feedback on it. Let's get into it. What would you do if they brought the power grid down? And by they, I mean if the government purposefully brought the power grid down. And I'm not asking that question for fun. I'm asking that question because the World Economic Forum is predicting that a cyber pandemic, you can look this up, been running exercises about it this year, is inevitable. You're probably saying, what is a cyber pandemic? It doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, what, what are we even talking about? Well, first of all, the reason I'm even paying attention to the World Economic Forum and their exercises is because they notoriously, in 2019, ran an exercise for a coronavirus pandemic that oddly all became true. I mean, without one slight difference, they said that uh, the coronavirus was going to escape from a wet market in South America. Of course, when the coronavirus uh, swept the nation, uh, swept the world in 2020, they said that it escaped from a wet market in China. You can still look that up, by the way. That's not a conspiracy theory. Um, that uh, they simulated that coronavirus pandemic. It was the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in collaboration with John Hopkins University. And um, the website is still up and they say, you know, a, a coronavirus pandemic is inevitable. And then boom, it happened the very next year. So uh, people say it's a conspiracy theory to believe that they knew that the coronavirus pandemic was going to happen. You don't have to believe it was a conspiracy theory or you can believe it wasn't a conspiracy theory. It's up to you. I don't really care. The point is, is that they made the prediction. They called it inevitable. And then it happened immediately. So for me personally, that signals to me that I should probably pay attention the next time the World Economic Forum makes a prediction and calls it inevitable. And lo and behold, they are predicting that a coronavirus pandemic, uh, a cyber pandemic, pardon, is going to happen and that it is once again inevitable. So if you look into the exercise that they have run this year, I believe they run it in July. Um, they, they've been meeting and talking about the cyber pandemic, what it would look like essentially. Uh, their idea is that they're going to have to sanitize the internet uh, because a bug, think of it as, as like a coronavirus for your computer, is going to sweep globally. And the only way they're gonna be able to stop this bug from infecting everything is to effectively shut down the internet, right? And they were talking about bringing down the power grid in an effort to do this. So imagine the government bringing down the power grid and you would not have access to anything um, that required an electrical charge. Now that sounds like something that's ripped straight out of a movie, but let's go ahead and get one thing straight first of all. Turning off power to systems won't actually stop viruses and it would only temporarily subdue denial of the service type attacks. Malware and other cyber threats usually live on non-volatile memory, like your hard drive, flash storage, or firmware stuff that keeps data even when your system's power is turned off. But turning everything off, that doesn't actually delete the malware. It just pauses it until you turn your system back on. It's like turning your car off when you get a flat tire. As soon as you turn that baby back on, you're still gonna have the same problem. Hey guys, quick note here. Make sure you guys subscribe and drop a comment down below. When I hit 500 subscribers, I'll be giving away a Raspberry Pi 5 to one of my supporters. I appreciate you guys, but let's go ahead and get back to the video. But let's say it's not some blanket doomsday attack. What if it's something that's more targeted towards the critical internet services, maybe something like DNS. One of the easiest ways to break the internet for people is to mess with DNS or domain name services. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like the phone book for the internet. It goes ahead and takes fully qualified domain names like www.google.com, www.facebook.com, whatever it is, and translate those names to IP addresses so computers can actually get around a network and get to those resources because they don't understand, you know, the regular names that we use. They use IP addresses. And now that might sound small, but it's a huge deal. Uh, without DNS, computers can't figure out where to send your requests. Actually, even in 2016, a group of hackers launched a massive DDoS attack, denial of service attack against a DNS provider called DIN and it knocked out Twitter, Netflix, Reddit, and a bunch of others for a few hours. And it can get worse. Instead of just breaking DNS, attackers could actually poison DNS records. Imagine if you search for google.com, instead of it actually sending you to a Google server, it sends you to a hacker server, right? And it might look just like Google. And for some reason, it'll conveniently ask you to re-log into your Google account so that when you actually send your credentials, instead of sending it to Google, it actually sends it to these hacker servers and now they have access to all your stuff. But of course there are a lot of things that kind of would prevent this. DNS isn't just centralized to one server on the internet. There are tons of DNS providers out there 
Plus, there's a lot of caching, fallback systems, and it's even built to handle stuff like this. Even during the DNS DIN attack back in 2016, the internet slowed down, some services were dropped, but the world didn't end. And again, no one needed to flip the entire power off to an entire country in order to fix it. Also, let's not forget about SSL certificates. Uh, if you land on a fake Google website, your web browser is probably going to be throwing a whole bunch of alerts saying that it's an untrusted or unverified certificate, meaning that it's not actually provided by a certificate authority that, you know, many different organizations trust on the internet. So that should give you some sort of warning right there that you're not on an actual website if DNS was poisoned. But then again, a lot of people don't really pay attention. They just click on things and try to get to whatever resource they're trying to get to. So uh, we might be cooked if DNS was poisoned. All right, but what if hackers decide to go a little bit deeper and instead of targeting that layer seven application, they're going down to layer three, the network layer, and try to target our core internet routers that are serviced by our ISPs, our internet service providers. I'm talking about routers that manage internet traffic across countries and continents or using a routing protocol called BGP or border gateway protocol. BGP is what helps traffic get from one network to another network. It's like GPS for all of your data across the internet. And to give this some real world context, think about payment kiosks. You know, at pharmacies or gas stations, these don't just process transactions locally. When you swipe your card, it needs to send that data somewhere. And it's generally gonna be across the country somewhere across the internet. When you swipe your card, it needs to send that data across the internet to a payment server. And what helps route that traffic? these BGP routers. So yeah, if hackers compromise those routers or even hit global content delivery networks like Cloudflare, that could absolutely cause huge problems. We're talking millions of users unable to reach banking systems, healthcare platforms, or payment processors. Could you imagine swiping your card for a life-saving medication at a pharmacy and the system just hangs because it can't reach the applicable server? That's the kind of disruption we're talking about if these routers were to be targeted and hacked. But and that's a big but. The internet is literally designed to route around these problems. There's redundancy everywhere. We've even seen BGP hijacks before. Specifically back in 2008, a Pakistani ISP internet service provider accidentally rerouted YouTube traffic and basically made YouTube vanish from half the world. And I'm telling you right now, if that was today, y'all would be going crazy. And it was bad, but it was fixed. No one needed to shut off the entire grid to get this thing fixed. And there was even additional occurrences that happened years after that that you might have not even heard about because it was honestly fixed rather fast. We didn't have to shut down the entire grid. Now look, those are just a few attack vector examples that I provided. And trust me, there's a thousand other different ways that a 14 year old can probably break the internet. That's way smarter than me and I wouldn't even be able to explain. And that's just because I'm a network engineer. I get packets from A to B and I can barely do that. But here's the thing. I can't think of a scenario that's so bad where the only solution is to turn off the entire grid. And if the government's telling you to do that, you might want to question it, uh, but that's just me, okay? And even if we did, it still wouldn't fix the problem. For something to be so bad that we'd have to cut the power, hackers would need to compromise tons of thousands of different device types across many different organizations, all of which have their own unique security setups, firewalls, and teams managing everything. You'd have to hack every bank, every ISP, every government agency, all at the same time with completely different systems, configurations, and people defending them. It's not a 0% chance, but it's highly unlikely. And even back in 2020, when SolarWinds was compromised via its supply chain, which ended up affecting thousands of different companies, organizations, and even the US government, we didn't shut off the power then. We found what the problem was. We isolated systems, patched vulnerabilities, and kept going. Uh, obviously, SolarWinds probably got kicked to the curb for a lot of people. I haven't seen anybody that still uses it today, uh, but you get the point. SolarWinds wasn't just some fringe software. It was used by everybody, and it still didn't bring down the internet to a halt where we had to shut off the grid. And not to mention, shutting off the power might actually make things worse in order to try and sanitize the internet. Not only would we not actually remove any malware and only temporarily disable denial of service attacks, you would actually halt critical services that hospitals and emergency response systems use, cut off tools needed to detect and respond to cybersecurity attacks, potentially corrupt systems that were in the middle of updates and many other things. It's basically like burning down your house because you saw a spider. And honestly, I don't blame you if you did do that, man. Uh, but not to mention, it would essentially be impossible to shut everything down. We have systems that cannot be shut down because of their necessity to keep people safe and alive. I'm talking about medical equipment, emergency broadcast systems, safety systems that monitor things like oxygen levels, and so many other things that are connected to the internet or at least connected to a network. And these things all have backup power systems, meaning even if we did cut the grid, these things are immediately gonna still be powered on because they're gonna have backup generators. They're gonna be having ups or uninterrupted power supplies and many other things. A lot of people would be down, but not everybody. And of course, once the internet comes back up, let's say those systems were in fact uh, infected, they would just be communicating right back on the internet again. So if cutting the grid's power isn't the right answer, then what is? It's simple. 
You just cross your fingers, cross your toes, squeeze your butt cheeks and pray. No, I'm just kidding. Many organizations have dedicated security teams that are waiting for these things. They're waiting for this stuff to pop off so they can go ahead and actually implement their security plans and actually do something. They generally are going to have some sort of steps that will allow them to isolate the threat, potentially patch vulnerabilities if needed, or even restore from clean backups if they need to or something even more technical than that, rather than just unplug the entire power and pray. So yeah, is it possible for a cyber attack to cause some sort of major disruption this year? Absolutely, and I'd honestly probably bet on it. But is it likely that the government would actually shut down the power grid in order to sanitize the internet? Probably not. But if they do decide to do that, just make sure I'm not the one on call, because I ain't trying to have to deal with that mess. But anyways, what I know, I'm just a network engineer who's just trying to fake it till I make it. What do you guys think? There's a lot of you guys out there who are probably way smarter than me in this. What are your thoughts on the World Economic Forum's post, Candace Owens' post, and uh, anything I've talked about in this video? I appreciate you guys' support. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.